And our last presentation, Oleg Yurievich Mamant of St. Petersburg, the use of multimodal approach towards treatment of uh, malignant pleura. Dear colleagues, I wanted also to share our experience in treating patients with uh, mesothelioma, plural mesothelioma. Uh, it was characterized by the median survival of 4 to 13 months for non-treated patients and from 6 to 18 months for treated patients. Uh, uh, Flores reports that it was uh, that uh, relapses uh, were diagnosed with 63% patients. And so the treatment will be aimed at reducing the possibility for early death. Uh, there are no standards for uh, surgery and practically no recommendations for chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Our idea was to improve the results of the treatment with malignant pleural mesothelioma. Uh, we uh, tried to use multimodal approach. We had patients only with uh, proven diagnosis. Uh, with either epithelioid or biphasic uh, bifas morphological types, uh, and uh, which uh, and response to any type of treatment is very poor. The survival rate is very low. From 2007 to 2015, uh, we treated 17 patients. Uh, combined treatment uh, using multimodal approach. Fifteen patients uh, were uh, had extra pleural pneumectomia. Uh, for some, uh, this is the staging diagram. We had seven cases. Uh, with surgery, we met the following technical difficulty. With standard access, we could not mobilize the diaphragm cupola. So the surgery was uh, performed practically uh, blindly, and we had to uh, guarantee ourselves the second access. And uh, that's why we decided also to develop the uh, assessment uh, guidelines and access uh, to the deep diaphragm sinuses. At the depth here was 211 millimeters, and it was impossible to mobilize the whole pleura. With the axis from the eighth gap between the ribs, we could find a better axis. The depth becomes lower, however, the axis is much more satisfactory, uh, both tangentially and in depth. One of the stages was the removal of a part of the diaphragm and also a removal of pericardium. We replaced uh, the pericardium with a net and that resulted in complications. In our case, it was hard tamponade. Now we're doing that with using the acryl thread. After the removal of the pleura, we uh, sensibilized the pleural cavity with phototetazine and radicalarine for five to ten minutes, as, and uh, 
the irradiation was at uh, 500 joules. And hyperthermic chemical perfusion. Uh, we didn't drain the incision, but we use cytostatin and high dosage and combined it with hyperthermia. In the course of chemical perfusion, there were no complications. Also, we had patients with a secondary pleural lesions. We also applied hyperthermic chemical perfusion. I thought uh, the problems arose uh, with the, uh, because of the scope of intervention. Uh, we had one case of uh, post-op uh, death. Um, the patient, uh, the suture of the left atrium uh, just parted. In another case, the death was registered on the 56th day because of the insufficient or incompetence of the right main bronchus uh, incompetence. Uh, two-year survival rate uh, for the patients who were treated with that multimodal approach uh, was 41.1 percent. 21 patient in this reference group. Uh, the median survival was 18 months. In the reference group, 21 months. Two-year survival rate, 41 percent. We also studied the radiation therapy and polychemotherapy. It was administered to patients uh, who had extra pleural uh, pleurectomy, and uh, with them, the survival, the median survival was better. So this method, in our opinion, can, can be recommended after surgery. Uh, we tried also to examine various doses of uh, the drugs. And if we used uh, 200 millimeters per one square meter and 120 minutes of perfusion, the results were better for that group. So, uh, because of that, uh, we have developed the following recommendations. Uh, very thorough hemostasis using argon and plasma coagulation. Uh, plus of the pericardial defect uh, of uh, a network of ligations to prevent intrapericardial hypertension. Uh, the hyperthermic perfusion of the pleural cavity should be done with a patient prone and turned to the side of the operation. Uh, Perfusion should be drained from the pleural cavity after chemoperfusion. And also, during and after uh, extrapleural pneumectomy, uh, there should uh, uh, hydration should be uh, um, performed, uh, and uh, and also we recommend to perform extrapleural pneumectomy. Uh, so that 
follow it up with the local control and radiation therapy. Multimodal approach uh, using the CETO reduction and uh, hyperthermal perfusion of the pleural cavity is a relatively safe method. Uh, two incisions, two thoracotomies uh, in this treatment of uh, patients uh, has certain advantages over the standard method. The multimodal treatment uh, in uh, comparison with the conservative methods increases uh, the time uh, of uh, and median survival. Questions, please. A very interesting presentation. So you irradiate half of the thorax. Each case should be individually discussed with a radiologist. Uh, we have now an installation for modeling the pleural cavity, and we discuss it with our radiologist, and we are doing it together. Thank you. Now our program is exhausted. We have some time for discussions. Does anyone want to comment or speak? It looks like we were discussing a very sophisticated issue today, the pathology with a very tragic prognosis. Uh, the cancer of the esophagus and mesothelioma, plural mesothelioma. Now we understand that though the reflux is one of the reasons, but we now find uh, is, uh, the ca cancer of the esophagus in the upper and in the middle parts of the esophagus among young women who have never smoked. This is another problem that uh, we have become witnesses. However, now we have a very good method. This is submucosal dissection. And maybe if we combine it with a PT, we will be, uh, if we could also assess the condition of the paraesophageal lymph nodes, we could apply some mucosal dissection and the scope of the operation will be much smaller. So everything is here in favor of the submucosal dissection. Speaking about surgery of the second and the third stages of esophageal cancer, the parallels made comparisons made by Sergei Yurievich of the stage and the size of the tumor were very interesting. How can we assess the depth of the invasion if the esophagus is stenotic? We cannot even reach uh, this location, uh, the endoscope wouldn't go there. Uh, MRI imaging 
can help us, but it cannot be yet be recommended as a required part of the algorithm of examination. But the length, but there is of course a correlation between the length of the tumor and its stage and depth. If it is under five centimeters, oh, we have convincing endoscopic information that it is mucosa or a submucosal layer or muscular layer. And if it is, uh, if uh, other uh, structures are involved, there might be chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or maybe bracket therapy. The size of irradiation is five to seven centimeters. In these ways, the regeneration of the esophagus and uh, formation of anastomosis between the esophagus and the stomach is problematic. We have also good results from brachytherapy. Speaking about mesothelioma, we need markers. Our first patient had surgery in 2007, and uh, we did neonectomy, the third rib and the fourth rib, and we applied chemical perfusion and other manipulations, and he's still alive. Panpleurectomy, the quality of life is not so very good, but he has his own crane, and he works on a construction site with that crane, moving all those levers. Here we must have certain markers of the activity of the tumor. And so here we can, we are not ready to say for whom panpleurectomy is indicated. I remember patients with whom the tumor prog progressed five or six months after surgery. Those were very aggressive tumors. So I think that new achievements are still ahead of us. What I heard today was very interesting and your opinion about the robotic surgery? Uh, when we started thoracolaparoscopic operations, I used to say that it is impossible to perform laparoscopy or thoracoscopy with uh, esophageal cancer. At that time, I thought that would be bad. Now I don't think so because we are doing like the, uh, doing this all the time. So far, I am not ready to say that robotic surgery, uh, for instance, as if I get ejectomy is a good thing. Might be my attitude will change. Time, cost, and advantages in regard to visualization are yet subject to doubt. And the advantages when we can change the angle of vision to 30, 60, or 270 degrees. But I liked it, and I wish that our patients only win as a result of our contacts like this one. Daniel, would you like to say a few words? Well, I have to say, very interesting uh, presentations, uh, interesting conversation and discussions. 
Um, it, is, it is particularly interesting for me to see um, experiences made here in Russia, which uh, I compare, of course, to the experiences that uh, I know from Germany and the United States, uh, where I trained partially. Um, I think we are all aiming for the same thing. We are aiming for doing a treatment to our patient that helps him maximally and harms him as, as little as possible. That's a way we are in the process going and, and we are still not there where we want to be. But I think one way is, um, one thing is prolonging life. Um, and the other thing which is very important is quality of life. So we really want to make sure that these patients that get some uh, time really get high quality time. And that's our future and that's where we will go in the, in the next time. Somebody else? Does anybody want to say something? So, with this optimistic view, we will wrap up this Congress for the thora thoracic specialists. This session was interesting. If we follow the trend of the views of the thoracic surgeons in the early uh, these centuries, the change of views from full negation to 2016. Uh, many surgeons, many cancer specialists have changed their views on the matter. There are lots of skeptics now who treat our methods like laparoscopic operations, thoracoscopic operation on the esophagus. Uh, we, you've seen our reaction to the perforation of the esophagus. For some of the surgeons, uh, this was a major scene and a great surprise for everyone, and they were asking whether the surgeons who performed this operation had any sleep over these seven days. There are many skeptics, but if we follow the trend, you see that skepticism is gradually diminishing, and the methods are uh, here, uh, they will hardly replace the traditional open surgery, but the overall trend and uh, the room left for the traditional surgery becomes smaller and smaller. The same can be said about traditional surgery I've discussed yesterday. I had a talk with one of the leading surgeons in Russia. I am not going to tell you his name. I asked him about his opinion on robotic surgery. And he said, that was, that is a blind alley. Today, I asked Daniel whether that was a blind alley or robots gave Daniel, an advantage over other methods, that it is not just a thing of fashion, but he feels how everything is better. And the Daniel answered that there is a definite advantage, but these advantages should be made clear for everyone. Today, he said that in laparoscopic operation, he felt not advantages, but shortcomings of the robots. While in other cases, he felt that robots have an advantage. Uh, we'll be still arguing about all that, but life will sooner or later put everything into its place. And we'll see who of us 
was right and who was wrong. In uh, follow-up to what Daniel said, we have during laparoscopic operation damage to the aorta. Not bad, just a tiny little bit. And we could fix it with a clamp. And for a very long time, we tried to stitch the aorta. And there are definite problems in stitching aorta. We couldn't use that angle, that turn. And I felt very sorry that I didn't have any other tool which could change the axis angle. Uh, we, of course, we sutured the aorta thoracoscopically, but God, that was hard. So far, we had only one complication, but we could do thoracotomy too. About the second part of our session, the plural mesothelioma, here we have even more skepticism around. And the clinics that use the methods demonstrated today or discussed today, the, you can count them on the fingers of one hand. Today, we learned very convincing information that these methods are effective. They both prolong the patient's life at with a better quality. And you, we know that these patients were looked at as potential dead people. But this very sophisticated methods like hyper hyperthermal perfusion of the pleural cavity, these methods, they offer very promising results. And if a clinic cannot follow this method, it should refer the patients to the hospital where they know how to use that. I wanted once again to thank our guests, Mr. Burmister from Kazan, our friends from the European Association of Surgical Oncology, that is Beatrao and Daniel Perez, who have taken part in our session and made very informative reports, and I think that this is the first, but not the last time, that they take part in our White Nights Forum. Congratulations, everyone, for, uh, on the participation in this forum, and I invite everyone to take part.